Now this is the first way, but there's another way and um, it's a bit sneaky. Now I want you to think back, right? When we were doing um, areas under curves in the first instance, I mentioned it earlier, and maybe some of you didn't catch it, that area under the curve is actually kind of a, it's a shorthand. It's not the most technically accurate way to say what an integral does. The best way to say it is it's an area bounded by an axis. That's okay, Perrin, welcome back. If an integral gives you an area bounded by an axis, well, it kind of implies that you can choose one axis or another. Now, we've been doing it to the x-axis this whole time, right? Well, you could do it to the y-axis if you wanted. You would just have to change. See how I've got this dx in here, right? That tells you which axis you're going to be uh, integrating with respect to. So if I integrated with respect to y, then I would get an area bounded to the y-axis. Now, you can see why that's useful here. If I just get rid of all of my previous sketching, this orange shape here is between x squared and an axis. It's just the vertical axis, not the horizontal one. So what I would need to do here for method two, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to compare this by integrating with the y-axis. Now, this is a bit sneaky and a bit weird, so I'm gonna walk you through it nice and slowly, okay? Usually, we would say that an area is equal to something like naught to four x squared dx, okay? That's the way we normally think about this, and I want you to pay close attention. Let me just put this over here because it's not actually the one that we want. For starters, we say, uh, make it a bit bigger, N number one, actually, I take that back. It's not for starters, it's the thing on the end, but I'm gonna focus on it first. dx means we're looking at the x-axis, so the area between your curve, which is uh, this guy over here, this curve and the x-axis, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this dx, I'm gonna switch it for a dy. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So in fact, I'll write that over here, dy, okay? That's a bit weird, integrating with respect to y, but we can handle this. Like in the exam, you might remember, you had to integrate something with respect to m, so uh, all of that kind of thing. You can integrate with respect to any variable that you like. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, let's do it in a different color. Um, we were integrating a function of x with respect to x. That makes sense, okay? But you, it's gonna be kind of hard to integrate a function of x with respect to y. So I don't want things in terms of x's, I want things in terms of y's. So let's have a think about this, right? What have I got here? Oh, I've somehow deleted that by accident. This is y equals x squared, y equals x squared. So instead of saying, well, this is y in terms of x, I want it to be x in terms of y. Hmm, let me say that one more time, okay? Before we were integrating this x squared thing, we were integrating y in terms of x. But now I'm doing it all backwards. I'm integrating with respect to y. So I'm going to change the subject of this equation, okay? If I were to take uh, this guy in here, and change the subject to x, what would I do to both sides? Anyone wanna suggest this equation here? What can I do to both sides to make x the subject? Any takers? <laughs> okay, seeing, ooh, a couple of different suggestions there. All right, all right, good. So yeah, the, I've got a square here, right? I wanna get rid of a square, so with some caution, I'm gonna take the square Root. Now, Ben, well done, extra gold star for Ben, because I am going to take the square root of both sides, but I know I'm integrating, right? So I'm going to write things as I have in the past with a, an index form, right, rather than using a square root notation. So y to the power of a half is equal to x. Do you see how I've gotten that by uh, doing x squared to the power of a half, and then I get y to the power of a half, okay? So this is the thing I'm integrating now. You can see I've made x the subject, I can integrate the thing in terms of y. So this will be y to the power of a half dy, okay? Now, the last thing that you can see in this integral, right, and we're so used to looking at it, we don't pay attention too much. You've got this four and this zero, right? The upper and the lower bounds. But there's actually something implied here that we're just kind of lazy and don't really write. That's what's implied here is that it's from x equals zero, it's an x boundary, right, to x equals Four, that's kind of implied there because you've got x's everywhere else, so this, these boundaries must be x boundaries as well. 
but I'm not integrating with respect to x anymore. I'm not integrating a thing with x's at all. I'm integrating something with y's. So therefore, this integral that I form, I don't want x boundaries. I want y boundaries. So have a look up here. Where do I start and where do I end? Instead of going from left to right, think carefully, now I'm going from bottom to top. So what's the lowest y value that has, that is connected to my area? Yeah, very good. Okay, so my lowest one is zero and it goes all the way up to 16. And this is a value that we actually saw earlier when we were working out the rectangle, right? So now my y values, or sorry, my boundaries rather, are naught to 16. And what's implied there, again, we're, we're a bit lazy because we don't usually write this, but what's implied there is y equals zero to y equals 16. But the fact that they're, um, you know, you've got all these y's over here is what implies that um, the boundaries are also y's. So I'm just going to go from naught to 16. So before I go any further, we've done a lot of mental work, even though I haven't written very much. Okay, so I'm going to write down what were the three things that we changed. Number one, you change the uh, variable of integration, what are you integrating with respect to, okay? So it's not a dx anymore, it's a dy. Then the second thing we changed was, we changed the function, so instead of being, over here on the right hand side, instead of being y in terms of x, we said x in terms of y. So we integrate the function in terms of y. And then lastly, we did these uh, boundaries over here. I know it was a bit weird that we went from right to left, but this tends to be the best way it fits in my head anyway. So we changed X boundaries into Y boundaries. And you've got to look carefully at your sketch to be able to tell what they are. Okay, so we changed them. One, two, three, and now we're ready to go. We don't need to do any stuff with a rectangle anymore because this integral will directly give us the area that we're after. Let's give it a shot. My integral here, uh, I'm going to increase the index, so that gives me y to the power of 3 on 2, and then I'm going to divide by 3 on 2, and then I go from 0 to 16. Uh, at this point here, I'm going to simplify before I, do my, um, before I do my evaluation of the upper and lower bounds. That divided by 3 over 2, when you divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's going to be a multiple of 2 thirds out the front, and that leaves me with y to the power of 3 on 2 from 0 to 16. Okay, ooh, I'm running out of space, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, let's see here, I've got my two-thirds out the front. Um, I'm now going to go, this is 16 to the power of 3 on 2, take away 0 to the power of 3 on 2, which is just 0. I'm going to sneak up here because I haven't left enough space for myself. This is two-thirds times, okay, now 16 to the power of 3 on 2. I'm going to do the on 2 first, so that's 16 to the power of a half, that's 4. And then I have a 3 on the top, so it's 4 cubed. So this is 64. I should have written an equal sign out the front. So this is equal to 128 over 3, which is exactly what we got earlier, confirming that we, the approach we took previously was also correct. So, method 1. We saw that integrating normally doesn't give us the area that we want, but if you subtract it from a rectangle, then you're good to go. You get the correct area. You just got to identify them carefully. Method two, because we noticed that this area was bounded to the y-axis, it was going all the way to the left, you can integrate with respect to y instead of with respect to x, and it works out fine. Now, for the vast majority of you, you're going to think this second area, uh, this second method, I should say, um, it hurt my brain. Like, it's, it's all this new kind of stuff I have to think about. I've got to, like, integrate with respect to a weird variable, and then I have to change what it looks like, and then boundaries, and it just is unfamiliar, okay? Why would I do this? Now, if you were doing this question, honestly, I would just as happily in my own brain, if I were doing this question in an exam, I would just as happily do method one. Um, I don't have to think about too much complex machinery and I'm much better at integrating with respect to x. The function's been given to me with respect to x already, so I might as well just go for it, okay? But I wanna say two things. Number one, um, this other method, um, it sort of gets the heart of, well, integration can be with respect to anything. It might be with respect to time or it might be with respect to the number of people in a population, okay? So the fact that you can integrate with respect to other things is important. 
And then secondly, depending on the area or the question you're dealing with, sometimes this is the only way, or at least the only efficient way. Here's another example. This area is very much like the area we just dealt with. It's the same function, y equals x squared, and uh, it's a very similar part of the graph, but what I'm missing, what's different from the previous question, is that I haven't included this part down here. Now, if we were to do this using the first, first method, using a subtraction of areas, um, it's gonna be a bit more complicated because the area under a curve, well, um, this area under the curve here, that's kind of not relevant, it's not even attached to the rectangle. This area under the curve is, but then you can't just do one big rectangle, you also have this other second rectangle here. It becomes more complicated very quickly. It's much more succinct to just say, oh, this is an area that's bounded to the y-axis, so I'm just gonna go from 10 to 16, it's y to the power of a half, dy, off I go. As you might expect, the more you do things like this, the more comfortable you'll get with them, but um, this is the way that's the most efficient. Okay, so what I would say, Leslie, in addition to what Mrs. Lisa said, which is exactly right, is just to be cautious when you do things like this, right? Tell us what you're doing. Like, don't just suddenly start, like if, if for example, um, I saw this question, right, in an exam, and then the first line of working that a student wrote was, um, the integral from naught to four of x squared minus 16 dx with a minus sign out the front, okay? Now this is gonna give you the right answer, uh, I think if I've understood your process correctly. It just kind of, it comes out of nowhere, like, what do you mean x squared minus 16? The function I gave you was not x squared minus 16. You can't just make it x squared minus 16 because you want to. Now, it does actually give you the right answer, but you would have to say something about, right? Like, like you know, translating this, you know, vertically 16 units in the downward direction or something like that to account for the fact that um, this integral that you're coming up with is quite different to the question that you've, um, you've just given, okay? So just be cautious there. Whenever you wanna change your question, I'm gonna show you an example of that in a second. Um, you can do it to make things simple for you. Just tell us what you're doing. Communicate clearly. It's not just about getting a right answer at the end, it's also about showing us why.